What's up, everybody? Thank you so much for coming to hang out. Today, this is going to be special. I had the opportunity of having my parents uh, stay with us for the past little bit. And because we did a video with Ali's dad on this while my dad was here, it just felt like I had to uh, make this video. We're going to talk a lot. And I didn't want to edit this out because it was just good talking to my dad. And I would love for all of you guys to get a, to get a chance to know him. I think we have an interesting conversation and we get to enjoy... Carlos Santana for my first time. Well, not really my first time. Smooth by Santana with Rob Thomas was playing throughout my childhood. So I always knew he was a good guitarist, but this was just a lot of fun. So thank you guys for being here. Hit like, subscribe. We're recording. Okay. Let's do this. Okay. okay. Guys, welcome. This is my dad, Don Jorge Duran. Say hello. Hola, que tal? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hello to everybody. You can uh, you can speak Spanish whenever you want. We can translate it. All right. I mean, <laughs> I'm trying to keep my English. Yeah, so it's okay. Yeah. So um, we did this in the we we did a video here where we had my father in law come and just show me some music that meant something to him. This was an idea that Ali had, and I had just such a good time to um like doing that. And my parents have been here for the past month or so. So before my parents leave, just wanted to do this with my dad. And I thought it'd be fun. <clears throat> oh, yeah. I feel it's great, actually. I, we are fun of your channel. So yeah. we have seen... This is like your kid. Like, you have to watch it because you're... No, no, no. <laughs> no? I mean, uh, I love to watch how you are able to analyze the music and the... And the composition mm -hmm. and see how that applies to to your life i mean to everybody's life and i can i come to recognize that music has been a huge uh, uh a way to form yeah. our ideas and and how to project that sure. or share that with others with yeah. our children so well, you just said made me think like, like something I haven't really like thought about because I'm just turning it, turning the air conditioning just to cool it down even more in here. Um, with what you just said, like, I hadn't thought about this ever, but one of the coolest things about, okay, with your job that we had to move so much, mm -hmm. the thing that could always connect me in every new country was, mu was music. Yeah. And the music that I could listen to, that I listened to, but also the music that I could play. Yeah. Right. So yeah. like, I, I, I had a band in every country I lived in, mm -hmm. right? Like, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a unifying thing. And if you have been, if you in those trips or yeah. those moving, uh, if you have listened or hear the music I play, right? Uh, and not the one you were listening in the back with your earphones. with my earphones and and, and my... realize now that you all have different perspective of the same situation and i'm thinking that we all we were all living the same experience interesting but uh now i realize that you were living it through your own uh, point of view yeah, cool that's cool and with different music yeah. but if you pay it, if you would have listened you would see that the music that i gave me company uh since i came to college and uh, what I would listen Friday night. Yeah. Tell, 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 tell folks at home where you went. For the very first city you went to to start learning English to okay. the Bay, bringing our, your family here. Yeah. Like, because that's a big, like immigrating an entire family like you did. Is yes. insane. So tell the folks at home because I think they'll, I think they'll understand where this yeah. love of music yeah. came in our family. Well, uh, I came to the realization or the desire to, really continuing that my education mom was finish was finishing her degree in chile yeah and uh, so i came and to prepare everything for when she got ready sure. yeah, to come so i the university who had the best english program for people who go on to entrance uh, college it was Utah State. So even though it was not my goal to mm -hmm. stay in Utah State, my goal was to go to BYU. But, uh, so. But before that, 
you went to Tulane, didn't you? Oh yeah. Oh well, there like yeah. That's what I was fishing for. Okay. Well, uh, even uh, applying for colleges and everything, I wanted to know if I was going to be able to function yeah. in the U.S. and in the U.S. Uh, schooling system. So I also needed to improve my English and to see if I was going to be, my English was going to be sufficient to, I mean, to allow me to go through the yeah. event. So uh, we came for a, during vacation, I convinced some friends that it was a good investment to use for this uh, vacation to come and learn English because English was the language that was going to help us to move ahead or sure. or to have uh, more chances, more opportunities. So we came to Tulane and, and that was a very good program too. I had an ex excellent teachers. And uh, so I was able to go from a level that it was kind of okay to a better, to feel more confident. Sure. Uh, that was to show your mother also that uh, I was able to do it. She needed, yeah, of course, she would have needed to feel, yeah, because feel your confidence yeah. after that experience for sure. Because actually, before coming, even for her, it was difficult to consider, yeah, let's go to the US, sure, because I had a good job, yeah, and we were doing well for our standard. Even my father told me. What else do you want? Yeah. I, and I remember my answer. I said, I don't know. The only thing that I cannot think that I can live the same way for the rest of my life doing the same thing. I want to see what, what, what more is out, out there. So I came to that conf uh, to this, uh, vacation. And uh, some of my friends would say, you're just crazy, crazy. But of course, other of uh, my mom's friend would say, uh, do you believe him that he is going to be studying there? I mean, he's yeah. going to be just partying. Right. Yeah. And you, did, you did study hard, but yes. that, and that's where I was going to that's what I was going to okay. fish for every. So when you told me about this, like and again, I didn't know that you did this until I went to New Orleans for my first time. Yeah. You told me that I didn't know you even did this Tulane. Oh, yes. Yeah. Like studying English yeah. program thing. Um, every you told me how every night you went out and just listened to jazz. Yes. Just all, yes. all over the city. Yes. And, and this was in the seventies. This was in yeah uh, around yeah seventy nine. Okay, yeah. So seventy nine. Okay, so it was late. Yeah, late seventies. Yeah, yeah. late seventies. Cool. So it was that. Just, that must have been just amazing. It was. Yeah. I mean, I I I like music. I wasn't too profound on jazz. One of the friends that came with us. He was really into jazz. So he like taught he you was what to listen. So he was, he yep. like knew what you guys should be listening yes. to and appreciating. Yes. And that's, so, and that's the best part. And so that actually leans into this video. And then let's finally get to the, the, the song. Um, it was probably your friend's excitement for the jazz that made you just listen for yes. it. And you knew you what he was talking about. Yeah. And you experienced it, yeah. and then you loved it, and then you wanted to keep going right. every night to listen to yeah. jazz right? Right. when you weren't fond of. Um, I think that's what, like, that's the coolest part about having this, doing this channel is like, it's just people sending me this stuff that they love. Yeah. And telling me why. Yeah. And then when I'm, so because of that, I'm watching for it, and I keep having these wonderful experiences. It's yeah. just, it's amazing how, how Did that you make happens. the connection? Yeah. Yeah. So what are we listening to, Pop? Well, I, I have to say that uh, my memories of, uh, of music and uh, coming out of a, I mean, out of, out, out of age, I mean, out, out to age, I mean, you know maturing. what, all of these sayings in English, I always forget too. So I actually don't. Yeah. <laughs> Same thing. You guys know what we're trying to say. <laughs> like, so in the seventies, it's when I was 15 years old. You got it. Uh, I was converted. To, yeah, to the church to the, at that time. Sure. But prior to that, I was searching for 
meaning. I went to different religions, but at the same time, I was getting captivated by music. Yeah. Most of the time, I didn't know what they were saying. Because in English, one of the, my favorite things in yeah. Spanish is when we sing what we think the English song said, right. but we got it. Yeah. There's like that song, it is the rhythm of the night. And uh -huh. the joke is, we we think they're saying, esa son riboco son Nike. <laughs> right? Like, so by the way, I want to make like my merchandise yeah. for the channel. I want it to be like these songs in English, but yeah. the way we singing them in completely right. wrong in Spanish. Right. So anyway, sure. So uh, the first thing it was being exposed to the Beatles. Okay. Yeah. Beatles came to US in 64. <laughs> Yeah. And that was a worldwide thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And George Harrison is your favorite Beatle. Yeah. Okay. Cool. It, For another time, but yeah. yeah. Uh, and then I, well, John Lennon too. Uh, sure, yeah. sure, sure. But, uh, so I started with that. And at the same time, the big thing in the world was the hippie movement. Sure. And I have to say that I was very attracted attracted yeah to that this idea of like uh this thing that comes from nature when you take it, it expands your mind to that there's more to yeah. just this life yeah especially when we we all were feelings that we are being given this uh, this world with uh rules that we didn't feel like they were just <clears throat> So we wanted to have a different way of living life. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, up to that point, you do what I say because you live in my home. Yeah. And as long as you live here, you have to do this. Yeah. Uh, being uh, tame or uh, so when you control a, a, an animal. Yeah. You. Uh, so. Sometimes you feel, I felt like that way. I remember, uh, then about well, another thing. I graduated from high school when I was 15. So it was quite young for that time. Yeah. Yeah. So I was intrigued for th by things that probably were not at my age, but still, but you were ahead yeah. in a way. So, so the first thing that I did kind of rebellious that I should have done <clears throat> is to go to the movies to see a report on Woodstock. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. And it was for older people. And sure. there I was, I mean, for 13, 13 years old. Crazy. Okay. And, uh, and I started. So Woodstock was legendary throughout the world. Oh, yeah. Cool. I mean, I mean, again, you're in, you're in, Vin in Valparaiso, Chile. Yeah. And you know, you're going to go watch this show about yeah. this amazing thing that yeah. happened. That's so cool. Yeah. So we were, at that time, we felt all connected. Hmm. Yeah. By that. Uh, but now that through your channel also, I realized that, uh, in the way that, in the same way that things have happened here in the U.S., and many of the things that happened in the whole world, it was based on reactions or following the steps that you were taking. Yeah. Because you were experiencing the, you were at the front end. I mean, mm -hmm. and you, you were going to Vietnam, not us, but we had an opinion about Vietnam. Sure. Because the same way that Vietnam was in the TV, yeah, TV here every night. Yeah, so people start experiencing that war differently hmm. than ever before, because now you were seeing what they were doing or what was was happening to them. Interesting. You saw a kid being burned and all sure. this stuff, and you start realizing that why are we doing all this? And that was what the hippie movement started. Why are we doing this? Killing people that they see us as an, as enemies, mm -hmm. but uh, we see them as enemies. Yeah. Why do we do this as people? Like, yeah. why are we still doing yeah. this? Yeah. So yeah, war is a stupid tragedy. Yes. Like, but it 
also is sadly our our, and, our fallen nature. We keep doing it. And be and we are being we were going through similar things yeah. in our countries because at the same time the Cold War yeah yeah was happening. Yeah. Everybody had their own reasons. And Chile was in the middle of the interest of the U of the US and Russia. Yeah. The USSR. Yeah. Uh because Chile was in an area that it was the past you could cross from the Atlantic to the Pacific through Chile. Yeah. And the only other alternative was uh, to go through the Panama Channel. Panama Canal. Yeah. So that was controlled by the US at that time. And uh, so we were in a war that wasn't ours. Interesting. Yeah. So others were just throwing ideas to us um, uh, that don't accept the imperialist yeah versus don't accept the communist yeah yeah so you were there in the middle and 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 what how can we decide yeah when uh, for some the way to control it was to control all the i don't know the the structure the and the others was how to we became we can establish a dictatorship in Chile or at the communists. Yes. Yeah. And the other, how we establish a control, uh, a dictatorship. Sure. From the right side. Yeah. So we were in the middle. Yeah. Trying to process realize, and, uh, yeah. yeah. And trying to gain right for those in more need that were my kind of people. Hmm. Because I came from that level. Sure. Yeah. So. Like I said, so this mu- so the because of all of this, that's why also the music and the culture that was being built by this hippie mo- movement uh-huh. music in America, why it was so meaningful in the yeah. rest of the world because yeah. the h- entire world is was essentially yeah. experiencing things yeah. vicariously or as a re- as a direct consequence yeah. of what was yeah. going on between supposedly just two yeah. countries, but no. Yeah. So that's okay. That makes so much sense. Cause I was like, yeah, one of the main reasons I was excited to do this was like to like wonder like, why, why did American music make it big in yeah. Chile too? Yeah. But that, that, so that really makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So it's, like, it's yeah. like right now in the, in the whole world, we have lived up to now thinking, uh, but there is one democracy that is working. Yeah. And that is the U.S. Right. And now we are concerned that the U.S. is turning into. Yeah. Uh, maybe establishing in kind, kind of a dictatorship sure. over people. Sure. So democracy is a big, the big thing that everybody's trying was to emulate, defend. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. And follow the U.S. Perfect. Yeah. Awesome. So Woodstock brings together all the cultures also. So for us Latinos, Santana comes to Woodstock. I did not know that. Again, this, I didn't know San, Carlos Santana was in. Yeah. So Carlos Santana. He has one of the best songs ever that came out when I was a kid. Uh-huh. <laughs> but okay, so yeah. what's so Santana and Woodstock? Yeah. Is, San, is, San, that, is that what we're gonna listen to? Well, yeah. Okay. But uh more than than that, I would say that uh now later through the books I'm reading, I'm realizing that people that were big in music later on for the Left side in the, in the communist. Yeah. He went to Woodstock and he was staying in Woodstock and became in love with rock. And he went back to Chile with that, those ideas. But at the same time, he was communist. He was still communist. Interesting. Yeah. But he could have gone the other direction. Interesting. Yeah. Then, uh, Coelho. Yeah. The right. Paulo Coelho. Yeah. Yeah. That from uh, the alchemist, yeah. Brazil. Yeah, he was a gusto too. Of course, of course, of course read, he was. Did you read his book? Of course, he the was. hippies. Yeah. Hippies. Okay. Then it. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, he was there, and at the same time they were trying drugs. Right, right, right. right. 
But there also was a big <coughs> man from Chile, Naranjo, who was a psychiatrist that was uh, uh, practicing or working in California. Yeah. And he started to study about all these uh, drugs that could allow you to get in touch with yourself. Now, that group is still exists now. Okay. Yeah. Now, with Coelho and with his book with the hippies, he started making it clear to us also of things that from, from the Naranjo and all those people trying to see this, uh, hallucino, hallucinogenics or, yeah, yeah who was the use of that would allow part of yourself connect. Sure. So then they started studying about the cultures in Latin America. Yeah, with ayahuasca and everything. Right. Yeah. So they go to Peru for the ayahuasca and then they make popular going to Machu Picchu. Interesting. Before that, it was, people were not interested. That's very interesting. They were just ruins. Huh? Okay. Uh, so people from around the world start getting together. And that in Chusco sure. and Machu Picchu and all of that. And then you have the writing in Neruda. Yeah. And uh, peop- uh, groups from Chile also that are into let's go up. Yeah. Go up the mountain. Yes. Yeah. And you start realizing that the whole, the music, all these practices were in a way, attempting to connect the spirit of the people from the, around the world. Sure. Yeah. And to me, that's fascinating. That's cool. Yeah. So, what's the what's the song, <laughs> Pop? That was amazing. That was great. But let's go to business. Great that's talking. No, yeah. <laughs> like, now I'm at, at the edge of my seat, as they say. Yeah. Well, that I, I'm realizing with through times and read from books that I've read. Uh, putting pieces together. But, uh, if I go back to that age, you know, uh, the music that uh, was, uh, big for us, uh, it was Jimi Hendrix. It sure. was the Stairways to Heaven. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, it, all of that. But, uh, and then the, the loving part yeah. of, uh, of the hippies, then a big uh, music for us was the Simon Gavel girl, no? And Sound of the Silence. Oh, sound, the Sound of Silence, yeah. Sound of Silence. Yeah. All that type of music that we could go to the beach and put a fire up and... And listen to some in a Garfunkel. It, yeah, or people who play in the guitar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, so uh, to me, the, and then the other music, it's like I was mentioning the Hara that was also Gusta, but he went through the communist side. But what I was mentioning the other day, the Haivas, that were pure, Haivas, it's a group from my hometown that, uh, after the dictatorship was established, they had to flee the country. Mm. And uh, they live and make the career in France. Interesting. Yeah. So now then they went back. To Latin America, and then they put music to the words of Neruda. Interesting. So, Altura de Machu Picchu. Okay. To me, that is one of the biggest things. Okay. Because it's calling everybody, every, brothers. Sure. And let's come, brothers, together yeah. and go up. Yeah. Yeah. To the mountain and be connected. Sure. Yeah. And and I think that is the big change uh i mean uh, of the impact of music yeah uh, to us yeah so i would say santana magic woman magic woman yeah uh but then Haivas, uh well simon garfunkel mm-hmm. the son of silence yeah all, all things that are kind of uh um the music of uh i mean the words of Neruda. yeah you know, to the Machu Picchu, yeah. So I don't know what. Which one? Should, which? 
Let's let's do a couple. Okay. Okay. So let's do a Santana Magic Woman. Yeah. We have just the audio here, but I kind of want to see what he's like live. Let's check this one out. Okay. So, of course, Santana was a hippie. Like I did, but like I never made that connection. Yeah. If he was living in the US, sure, because he came with his family. Yeah, yeah. His father brought him here, but and he started to develop all this Latino vibe. That's cool. Yeah, well, so why is he accepted? So he like had, had this culture, except like. Yeah. Be interested and in, intrigued in ours. Yeah. Yeah. You will see the gas at the beginning. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, because like, I, I feel like I, we could dance this yeah. in, in the club, but then at the same time, if I was just into like guitar and jazz, this would, I would be a good, this would be a good. I'm gonna pause them. Okay. Rewind that again. So, so I've I've talked about this on the channel uh, a lot recently. I didn't um I, I didn't used to appreciate this sort of guitar playing because mm-hmm. I was like, oh, it's not that fast, it's not that complex. Mm-hmm. But wow, does it speak, mm-hmm. right? And like it says, it, it, they're I don't know how to describe it, but he's like, he gets you, yeah. I mean. It, it, you're in the on the yeah you get in the feel in the yeah. the the yeah the way the the vibe the right, right. uh huh yeah. This mariachi band, really. So he, he was kind up. of exploded as a child doing mariachis. He was exposed to mariachi. Interesting. Yeah. But then I guess he's exposed to jazz and to other kinds. So of then music. he just put it all together. That's so cool. That's so cool. And to me, that is the the miracle around the world. Yeah, uh, people that are searching for meaning. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, getting in touch through music. Yeah, I love. Yeah, yeah, I love that. I need you so bad, magic woman. I can't leave you alone.
Yeah. 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 My co-workers, or the people that were working with me, started to be like, Oh, this is dope! This is a good look sometimes! That's cool! He, sp he speaks the, the universal language of funky. Yeah. And to me, that also another thing that you're doing through your channel. Because at the same time, they were discovering... Okay, my, we got the blue screen of death there, but we're back recording. What were you saying about with country? <laughs> <laughs> that the your you discovering country sure yeah something that you have never been exposed and discovering the value that yeah. it has and you appreciating it uh the same thing can happen to people elsewhere sure. like I, I was saying that i had my all my co-workers loving santana yeah and in the philippines i mean yeah if someone just gives you the right like lens to to listen to something, uh -huh. um, a, a music that you probably didn't, yeah. didn't expect to like so much, you you can yeah. and will. Yeah. And to me, that's something that we need to find the way to pass that to the new generation. I love that because the new generation, they didn't even go through all this experience, yeah. but they're leaving the result of that. So sometimes they want to say, "Hey, I." Right. Yeah, thanks. Right. Yeah. No. Yeah, you're exactly right. And, and I think that's those. those that's a, that's a, that has been one of my favorite like uh, communities to become friends with. Mm -hmm. Are like your like people your age. Yeah, they're the ones who are enlightening me with all these music, yeah. and I, it's, it's it's so great. And you're so you're right. Yeah, and there's it's almost like yeah, there is like a duty there. And hey, I'm glad we're documenting the impact that that yeah. can have. Yeah. Got 40 seconds left in this. Let's see how it closes out. And I can also just imagine, like, if I was on shrooms, this song would be awesome. <laughs> that was great. He was great. And this was right, like, soon after Woodstock. This right. was 1970. So I, I did not know. I, I've never, like, asked myself or wondered where where did he, Carlos Santana, how did he get so big? And this all yeah. just makes so much sense. This is yeah. so cool. Yeah. Very cool.